What's going on, family? It's your boy, Mike Macklin, a.k.a. Money Mike, the financial Thanos, because I'm snapping my fingers and I'm turning your financial problems to dust. Hey, I want to welcome you guys to my page. Welcome you to another wonderful Money Monday. I'm your host, Money Mike. I am a personal financial coach specializing in a very simple five-step strategy that is going to help you achieve personal financial success. To learn more about that, I want you to go to my website, www.moneymike313.com. Book yourself a free 30-minute consultation with me, and let's get you on the right side of the money. All right, so now every single Monday I do what's called Money Mondays. Now, what I've been doing lately is reading different news articles that talk about financial um, issues, and today is no different. So typically what I do is just kind of you know scroll through Yahoo um, Finance and find some di decent articles uh, that catch my eye and share that information with you. So without further ado, we actually going to get right into this thing. Let's check out what's going on right now. I actually have an article already pulled up that I wanted to read to you all. Um, this one is actually talking about um, federal judges rule that CDC's federal eviction moratorium is not legal. Pretty interesting to me. Um, this was written on May the 5th. So this was what well, today's the 10th. So about five days ago. It's a quick read. So we're going to get right into it. The eviction moratorium issued by the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, CDC, during the COVID-19 pandemic is not legit according to a federal judge's ruling on Wednesday in Washington. The question for the court is a narrow one. Does the Public Health Service Act grant the CDC the legal authority to impose a nationwide eviction moratorium? It does not, Judge um, Dabney Friedrich wrote in her opinion. Okay, already sounded like opinion. All right, the moratorium was first issued last year as the coronavirus pandemic roiled the U.S. economy and prompted massive layoffs that hit lower income Americans, especially hard, those um, who were most likely renters. OK, um, the court recognizes that the COVID-19 pandemic is a serious public health crisis that has presented unprecedented challenges for public health officials and the nation as a whole. The pandemic has triggered difficult um, policy decisions that have had enormous real world consequences the nationwide eviction moratorium is one such decision. The federal moratorium was set to um, was set to expire on June 30th, but it's in unclear what comes next. The CDC referred Yahoo Money's request for comment to Justice Department, which is appealing a similar ruling in Texas. The eviction moratorium has faced multiple legal challenges, with courts ruling both in favor of the CDC and in favor of landlords. According to Deanne Yentl, president and CEO of the National Low Income Housing Coalition, a housing advisory group. While the latest ruling is written more starkly than previous ones, it is likely it likely has um, equally limited application impacting only the plaintiffs who brought the case or at most renters in the district's court's jurisdiction. The Department of Justice should immediately appeal the flawed ruling and the Biden administration should continue to vigorously defend and enforce the moratorium, at least until emergency rental assistance provided by Congress reaches the renters who need it to remain stably housed. Um, OK, they're saying here several studies have showed the eviction moratoriums on the state and local level help to combat the spread of COVID-19. OK, um, one study found that policies limiting evictions during the pandemic, reduced COVID-19 deaths by 11% and infections by 8% in the U.S. from March through November last year. Had those moratoriums been implemented in every county in the U.S., infections would have been cut by 14.2% and deaths by 40.7% during that time, the study found. Similarly, the expiration of state eviction protections led to 433,700 additional coronavirus cases and 10,700 excess deaths from March to September, according to another study. Okay, so um, this one actually sounded more like opinion than actual um, actual law. Um, as we know, the moratorium is set to expire in um, June, but they're still kind of, you know, working that out. 
Um, I think in this um, American Relief Act, maybe working to, you know, help address this moratorium thing. It sounded like um, some people in different states, different landlords have brought this up and some have won, some have not won. Um, my thoughts on that, listen, man, you know, I, I'm pretty certain that that monies are being given to these landlords to cover the lack of their um, tenants being able to pay rent. Not sure um, exactly how they're addressing this totally, but um, I'm, I'm thinking that this is this is something that's already being handled. And I can agree that, you know, hey, you don't want to kick somebody out right now. It's just it's just not a good time. Now, you can argue both sides of that. But for me personally, I mean, I just say, hey, look, you know, let's let's continue to take care of people instead of giving this money, you know, to big businesses and things like that. I that's my personal stance on that. So we're going to move on. We're going to find us another story here um, to go over. I think I found another one a second ago talking about am I even on my right thing? Let's see. Let's go in personal finance and let's go home. Let's see what we got. Okay, let's see, let's see. How's this? Okay, there we go. I'm about to say this thing don't want me to be great. Yeah, that's one I just read. Mm. Okay. Let's let's take a look at this one. This is this seems kind of crazy. Alright, let's see when this was written. This was written May 5th also. Okay, and this is a three minute read. And this is basically saying Montana plans to cancel unemployment benefits to address severe workforce shortage. All right, let's let's get into this one. Montana plans to stop some of its federally funded unemployment benefits to address the state's severe workforce shortage, according to its labor department, which will leave many out of work residents without any support at all. Nearly every every sector in our economy faces a labor shortage. Um, the vast expansion of federal unemployment benefits is now doing more harm than good. Instead, the state will begin to offer return to work bonuses to help employers looking to hire. Starting June 27th, Mon June 27th, Montanans will lose access to the extra $300 in weekly unemployment benefits, but maintain their regular benefits. Contractors, gig workers, and others will also lose access to the pandemic unemployment assistance program, meaning those workers won't get any benefits. Those relying on the pandemic emergency unemployment compensation program, which gives additional weeks of unemployment benefits to workers, will stop receiving benefits. The state also plans to reinstate the requirement that stipulates workers must be actively searching for a job to qualify for unemployment benefits. Montana move to end these fully federally funded UI programs um, along with their COVID-19 exceptions is cruel, uninformed, and disproportionately harms black and indigenous people of color and women, Alex Tapia um, says. Ending these programs will leave 22,459 people unable to support their families and hurt thousands more. Montana's unemployment rate was 3.8% in March, down from 11.9% pandemic peak, peak in April 2020, according to data by the Labor Department. The federally, the federally funded unemployment programs run through September 6th nationwide. Montana's cash, cancellation would cost workers at least $3,000 per worker in supplement benefits if they couldn't find work through the program expiration. Workers on PUA and PE PEUC would lose at least 4500 in benefits because they no longer will be eligible for the base unemployment benefit. Um, limited evidence of work disincentives. Different papers have established that the extra 600 in benefits distributed earlier in the pandemic had limited labor supply effects and likely didn't desensitize work, dis disincentivize work including one by the National Bureau of Economic Research and another by Yale University. The current supplemental benefit is worth half of what those papers reviewed. The 100% federally paid unemployment benefits have boosted spending and contributed to the strong economic recovery. Andrew Stettner, an unemployment insurance expert and senior fellow at the Century Foundation, told Yahoo Money, it's short-sighted for the state to sacrifice the economic stimulus based on the anecdotal labor shortages 
concerns of a few employers, especially given the limited evidence of work disincentives from unemployment paid during the pandemic. Montana is the first and only state to fully opt out of the federally the federal unemployment benefit program enacted in the pandemic and currently extended by the American Rescue Plan signed into law in March. As a way to incentivize workers to return to work, the state is offering a one-time return to work payment of $1,200 using money from the American Rescue Plan to fund the program. Only those who complete four weeks of work would receive the payment. Incentives matter. Our return to work bonus and the return to pre-pandemic unemployment programs will help get Montanans back to work. Okay, um, I can kind of, again, si- see see both sides of this. Um, I've talked to a lot of people and, you know, they've kind of said, yeah, this whole, you know, basically a lot of people are making more money not going to work than they are. Um, so I can kind of see where employers would be concerned. Um, however, I do agree that, um, you know, not everybody has a, a easy time finding a job. Not everybody can, you know, just bounce back into the workforce like that. And I, I personally, I don't think this plan is the greatest plan here. You don't, you're basically only giving people $1,200 to come back to work. You know, what it doesn't say is, okay, what are you paying these people? What are you going, are you going to pay them more, you know, to help them during these times? Or how's that even going to work out? Are you going to let them work from home still? It's, it's, it's a lot of things that really wasn't addressed in this. And so um, I honestly, I don't think it's a good idea. Um, again, I can see where employers would, would want that to end, you know, to encourage people to come back to work. But I mean, there's, there's these businesses, you know, are being taken care of through, you know, the PPP loans and things like that. So I, I, I just don't, I don't see this thing really doing a whole lot. I don't think it, is really going to be helpful. And again, you only offering people $1,200 and they got to be working for four weeks before you even pay them. So everything that I'm reading, it's not really a huge help. Um, so that's the two stories that I'm going to cover today. I wanted to kind of look at the, the federal government stories, looking at, you know, what, what, what people are, what the federal government is doing about what we got going on. So, um, it's, it's looking like, you know, right now, honestly, we kind of just got to, you know, try to get our hands on as much of these, these, this federal money that's possible. There's, there's different things you can argue about that, but that's, that's kind of, you know, my thoughts on the two articles today. Um, you guys in the comments below, let me know what you think. And also, you know, hit that like button. If you enjoyed the video, I definitely would appreciate that. I appreciate your time here today. This has been Mike Macklin with money Mondays with money. Mike, I hope you guys enjoyed this. And as I leave, I want to let you all know, I love you. God loves you. He smiles when he sees you and he sees you all the time. So he's always smiling. So why aren't we? Hey, you guys have a fantastic day. I'll catch you on the next one. Y'all take care of yourselves. God bless you all. Go on. Damn, I ain't been broken a minute. Damn, I ain't been broken a minute.